Brittany. Sienna. Oh, my God. Let's do this th- the thing where I start talking about time. Uh-huh. You know how I open and I I'm get, really get confused? Right. Because I'm like, the audience is seeing this later. But right, I'm right, recording right. recording it earlier. Yeah. That's all there is to it. We've So we've recorded this podcast two years ago. No, I'm just kidding. We banked it. <laughs> you know, what's the name of that guy who predicted everything with the numbers? Nostradamus. Nostradamus, yeah. Yeah, I'm actually a big follower of him. And so I can predict comic book mm. release weeks and things using Nostradamus's numbers. So this is two years ago. It's all there. Yeah. And honestly, the apocalypse is coming. But you know who will be saved? You? Anyone who subscribes to oh. the Ultimate Comics Live Show podcast. So if you haven't, we don't <laughs> normally do this at the end, but I'm going to, honestly, your lives are in danger. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, because it's, I'll tell you. That's when it's going to happen. Oh, my God. So there's not a lot of time. There's we, not. Especially if we're going to monetize and, like, make some money to take with us into the afterlife. <laughs> Subscribe. Please. <laughs> Little known fact, the only money that you can take with you <laughs> is money that you earn via YouTube. <laughs> Everything else you can't take to the other side. Oh, it's getting warm in here. I know. That's the brimstone <laughs> and the fo- flames okay. that are coming. Ay. Anyway, hit us, hit that subscribe button. Hit the subscribe <laughs> and the notification bell. <laughs> and that helps. <laughs> <laughs> Counterbalance some of the wrongs you've done in your life. Anyway, uh, well, it's been a minute. <clears throat> it has since been a they've heard this because we were busy. Yes, we've been very busy. We were at Heroes Con. We were. And then after that, last Monday Mm -hmm. was the morning after I drove back with our producer from Heroes Con, and we didn't get in until 11 plus. Oof. So we were too sleepy to do a good show. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. But what did you think of Heroes Con? It was a lot of fun. It was my first year. I was about to ask. Yeah. It was my first year there. Um, I really enjoyed it. I loved that it was just pure comic book energy. You yes. Because a lot of other conventions, you have the, the pop culture aspect that sort of overhangs on everything. No, but this is, this is just... CBE. Yeah. It, no, you can't smoke that. Yeah. <laughs> It was very comic book oriented. I loved it. I loved seeing all of the creators, um, saw some familiar faces that I knew. We had a lot of people come up to us. Now, I don't remember their names. <laughs> Do you? Don't don't look at me and then <laughs> you put the pressure I on me. I remember some of their names, <laughs> but not all of them. So it'd be unfair to the people I've forgotten. But you, listening. Mm-hmm. You. I remember you. We remember you. If- no. It was awesome. <laughs> Uh, we got to talk to some people who were, who were moving to Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got to talk to other people. You had a, we had, we were having different types of conversations. We were having different types of conversations. People who came up to me, uh-huh. my favorite guy who came up to me said, he opens with, there's no hello, hey Sienna, no introduction. He just walks up to me. I'm working. Mm-hmm. My staff is around me. And he says, ah, you know, I didn't really mean to tell you to kill yourself. Now, obviously, I don't know what you viewers look like. So this is just coming up to me in the middle of a convention. So I pulled out my Colt 45 and I said, down on the ground. I will do as I please. <laughs> no, no, he was referencing a little joke, jokey back and forth from the Star Wars. A little jokey joke. Po- uh, live show we had. Yeah, on. yeah. But it, I thought it was an interesting greeting. I'm going to start kind of coming up to people that I've never met in real life and saying that you yeah I mean well and that's what (laughs) that's that's what's so funny is is the actual contrast because then I have people coming up to me and they're like hey so nice to meet you love the podcast you and Sienna have great chemistry I moved here from California I live in Holly Springs and you know it is just so nice to see such a great store like Ultimate Comics and like and then poor Sienna by the way (laughs) Glad you didn't pull the trigger. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Glad I didn't have the stones. <laughs> uh, so thank you to all of the people that came yes. up to, to me who didn't mention killing or well, unaliving I was, myself. And now that I've we've opened with this intro, I am a little nervous because of the, the father and son. <laughs> when the young son was there, 
I was like, I literally told him, I was like, I taught you some new words. Mm. He said, I knew them already. And I was like, no, you didn't. Not, <laughs> not everything I've said. If you watch the live show weekly, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. There's some there's some terminology in there that you're yeah. going to look up. Yeah. So, but no, it was, it was awesome seeing every, I mean, that was awesome. It was great getting photos with everyone. I'll see if I have photos on my phone uh, that we can maybe post on, on the YouTube community yeah. page yeah um but it was a blast but that was why we've had a two-week hiatus yes and people i mean Brittany herself if you look <laughs> she's been jonesing she's got rashes yeah everywhere. Been, withdrawal <laughs> uh so we need to to jump back into it and give you guys the reviews that you have been demanding, demanding. i mean honestly the email the podcast at ultimatecomics.com email you wouldn't believe the amount of mail you wouldn't that we've believe gotten. the one email that did we we've did we get one? Oh, we, we don't a, check it we don't check it we don't know <laughs> nobody checks it all right <laughs> so i thought we'd get you know we're pretty far in at this point mm -hmm. we've been doing this a while yeah this is years now <laughs> episode own say is issue 11 here mm -hmm. So I figured it's finally time, you know, we've gone through most of the, any question I could think of. We've done it, mm. you know. We've, <laughs> <laughs> Sienna has run out of We've questions. run out of ideas. So it's time to get, well, search inward. Mm -hmm. A little re reflection. You get a little zen, uh -huh. you know, <clears throat> mindfulness, meditation. I've got some yoga mats. Oh, great. We great. smoked a lot of weed before this to really get inside of our bodies. Mm -hmm. Uh, what makes a good comic book podcast? And I figured, as the experts, this is something that we, us three, would all know about. Oh, because yeah, Because we've sure. got the best one. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right, so fire away. <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> what? We've learned so much. I have, this is in the prep doc. All right, it's time for the Ultimate Comics Podcast, and we get meta. And could we know more, what could we know more about than making comic book podcasts? What do you think we did right? What do you think we did wrong? As Chairman Mao would say, it's time to self-critique. Um, I think because we've done... that was a big thing in the like, you know, early Communist Party was to criticize yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we've done um, everything wrong. Um, it was all made up. The points didn't matter. We just were fired. No, we. I, I think we were doing some some stuff right. I think we've been leaving it all on the court. Yeah, and that's why Zach made me put my clothes back on before we started rolling. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry. You know what I really did this weekend? I read the Steve Martin, Steve Martin's autobiography. So oh, that might have been influencing. You you sparked something. Oh like man. That. Yeah. I tried to get Allison to rewatch The Jerk. She said, "Still no." <laughs> Still no. Um, but okay. <clears throat> so one of the things I think we did differently is we actually talked about the comic books, which I think is a positive. That is absolutely. What do you think? I mean, that was. In a comic book podcast. You would think that's top of that mind. should be number one. But honestly, because we actually read them. Right. Which I don't know that, you know, our, our contemporaries, our, our colleagues, I think everyone who has a podcast, they're probably our colleagues. Um, well, they're not as good as us because they don't really get into the content as much as mm -hmm. we do, I feel like. We really kind of get into it. We read it. I mean, and that's, read it. that's been a plus for me, a, a huge positive, especially coming into this as like a newer not super comic book well-read person yeah uh, it's been great being able to read all of this new content um every week i've really enjoyed it this is the same for me i never really read any comics before never the podcast started not a one um oh i will say this spoiler alert this was my first uncle scrooge comic that i've read yeah i've never read nor watched any disney uh it was my first comic but i've obviously i love uncle scrooge he's great Spoiler alert. But we didn't, speaking of Uncle Scrooge, I feel like a lot of our colleagues, <laughs> enemies, they really talk about the monetary value of these things, like their stocks, mm. like their penny stocks. Mm -hmm. And they're Wolf of Wall Street. Uncle Scrooge. They're Uncle Scrooge. And I actually like to read them. I think a lot of our viewers really enjoyed that we read the books because anybody who came up to me uh, in person that talked about the podcast that was their question, was like, what was your favorite? Which mm -hmm. one did you like the most? I think they really enjoyed that we were enjoying it along with them. Yeah, I think so, too. I think um, I think what makes a good comic po book podcast is actually liking comic books, <laughs> reading comic books, and then 
talking about comic books. Mm-hmm. Um, I think those three things are essential. Mm-hmm. But our colleagues, some colleagues would would agree to disagree, but that's okay. Uh, but what do you think we did wrong? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> now, we actually are pretty, I mean, we've had some pretty good growth mm-hmm. on this podcast really quickly. Yeah. We actually had Zach and I, we were sitting down to lunch at Heroes Con, and we made friends. We will post these photos. We did, Zach and I both married MJ Watson on the floor of Heroes Con. We met this guy. He asked to sit at our table because we he, we looked really cool. Also, we were the only table that had a spare chair. Oh, right. uh, so he asked to sit with us and we are talking. And he built this crazy backdrop, photo drop, exact replica of the cover of the MJ Spider-Man wedding. Oh, yeah, And he, yeah, yeah. he got it signed by John Romita Jr. And he dressed up as Spidey. And awesome. anyway, he said he knew me from YouTube. And I was like, that's me. And then I said, since I'm a big star, please let me marry MJ. Yeah. And I did. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you. That's and great. then Zach married her. It's like a brother's husband's kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations to you both uh, on your yeah. life endeavors with MJ. Yeah. Um, that was fun because when we were taking the photos, when Zach went up, I yelled out. Because so, we were right across the the street from Daniel Warren Johnson who always had this massive line yeah just blocking our booth because he's so (laughs) handsome and popular and what a nice guy and then we're taking the photos and I shout at Zach cop a feel and then everyone in the line turns (laughs) and then Zach was like no (laughs) no (laughs) anyway um what do we think we did wrong um Zach you're a producer what do you think it's time for you to talk. Mm-hmm. More uh, speculation. We should have had more speculation. More speculation. To drive up the views. You think we should have. You're yeah. the devil, devil's advocate. I, I mean, and Zach is not the first person to have told me that because I, I've also heard from other people who've listened. They were like, you guys are too positive. Uh, You're too one neutral. One of my employees says I'm a shill. And I'm like, there's just so many books that come out each week. Mm -hmm. Why waste your breath talking about the bad ones when there's so many good ones? We don't have enough time to talk about all the good ones already. Right. So why am I converting airwaves to talking about the bad ones? Now, would it be more fun for me? Would it be more detrimental to the brand? Mm. Both of those things would be true if we talked about bad ones. But I don't know. Like, Like I said, there's just so many good ones that I'm always like, man... Mm-hmm. We don't have enough time. Right, right. So so why would we be wasting time talking well, about the negative? And I think, you know, rage baiting is such a huge thing nowadays. Yeah. And sure, it gets up your views, but y- there's not enough positivity in the world anymore. And right. I, I enjoy talking about the things that I like rather than just spending a whole, you know, hour session with you being like, this is terrible. I right. hated this and that. And the, you know, like it's so negative. Yeah. And honestly... Um, you know, we did try to lean in by at least making our, our, our photos. Yes. We tried to we do did. more and clickbaity photos. They did thumbnails. work when we went a certain way. When we included certain things. <laughs> Look at our view elements. counts. <laughs> Boss Nass. You can, he's a, he boosts your views. Yeah. Always use Boss Nass and your thumbnails. That's a little trick of the trade that we learned. Yeah. Um, Something we did right. <laughs> So how, I guess then, you know, how do you think we could improve? So Zach says, you know, screw your false modesty and your morals and all that and talk about what gets clicks. That's our producer talking. That's not me. Yeah. I feel exactly the opposite. I'm more about the art form of right. podcasting. Right. And staying true to yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Where do you fall there? I think that it is a it is a balancing act because when you're trying to grow a channel, being giving that shock value or yeah. following those trends, unfortunately, it is going to make you grow faster. It's going to get you a bigger audience. And we have so many ideas for merchandise, mm-hmm. and it would let us do them quicker. I mean, we just came up with a T-shirt idea. We we can't get into it. We can't get into but it. But the sales would be through through the roof. I would wear it. Seems fun. Yeah. Just great. Um, um, no, but I, I, I do think that it's a, it's always a struggle. I, I watch, obviously, a lot of YouTube and a lot of YouTubers, and I see how often they stray away from their original <laughs> art or their original passion because they're trying to follow the trends. Follow the algorithm. And follow the algorithm and beat that algorithm so that they can get, you know, views. Um, 
And sometimes it's sad, you know, because they lose sort of a sense of their their themselves, their channel. And as Brittany knows, I'm a weakling. I cannot beat the algorithm. <laughs> she saw that firsthand at Heroes Con where I refused to step in to protect her. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't take on the algorithm. So why even try? Well, I can't even I take mean, on the listen, algorithm. Listen, I'm a yellow belt <laughs> with two black pieces of electrical tape. I cannot take on the algorithm. Uh, on the other side of that coin, though, on the flip side, I do think that when you become a full-time YouTuber... Which was our goal this whole time. Was our goal this whole time. Uh, you have that sort of flexibility to to dip into both trends mm. and your passions, to stay true to yourself while still kind of giving to the masses what they want. See, that's what my hope for this is, you know, eventually this becomes a podcast network right so there's the positive channel and again we make so much monetization money especially once people learn that it's the only way to save their eternal souls it was serious. um then i could hire a replacement for me mm. you know maybe a replacement for you and then we do this and then we can do like like one where we're like our evil twins and we're just talking bad about books mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and yes. then we could have different versions you know mm -hmm. like the david ramsey network Yes. You know? Yes. I mean, if you guys are on. <laughs> and uh, and we create our own uh, streaming channel that costs money, even yes. though we're still dropping YouTube videos yes. for free. So that's kind of the hope, <laughs> the long-term hope. But OK, so there's things we can do better. Let us know in the comments. I'm sure you will. I'm sure you're like, man, Chomping one thing bit. we would really enjoy is if you finally put the timestamps in there so we can skip this prattle and get to the books. That's a room for improvement <laughs> that we will take. We know. Honestly, once we it know. happens, I can't wait to see how often the most replayed is. Our average like, right? view time <laughs> drop. Yeah, when you can see the little graph. Uh -huh. It's like, oh. <laughs> The funny bit. And That's we haven't even Holy added shit. in ads. We aren't even sponsored. Not and yet. we're this bad Real already. <laughs> All right. So, room for improvement. Mm hmm shoot us an email we won't read at podcast we don't even know if you already have you might have already sent us room for improvement they're like they're gonna get back to me one of these days oh, we're not podcast at ultimatecomics.com send us some criticism some rave reviews and then you'll have to when you see us in person let us know what you wrote in the email because mm -hmm. again mm -hmm. it's just set to auto delete <laughs> <laughs> um or just hit us up in the comments because what i've found is the more comments you get the more yeah engagement. algorithm you have engagement so guys like seriously we we want the comments and we also need to These start responding to the comments because I, that I also, do sometimes uh you did you were so good at it when we first started and Fell then i just the wagon. So, slowly watched as you just ignored more <laughs> <laughs> sorry guys <laughs> all right well let's get into it yes because we actually did read some books we, we are excited we about i'm gonna start with Perhaps, all right, now just quick, before we pick it up, it's the first on my sheet here. Yes. Was it your favorite read of the week? Or yeah. It is. I think so. I mean, it was a really close game this week mm -hmm. for me, but I do, I really enjoyed it. So, of course, Brittany's favorite. Mm -hmm. Honestly, might have been my, what? <sighs> I know, it's hard. I think it's a, it's a close second for me, but real close. Zaytana, bring down the house. Mm-hmm. Numero uno. This is from DC Black Label. Uh, it is written by Mariko Tamaki, which if you are like a snooty kind of comic book fan like me, uh, you know, she does a lot of like Eisner nominated, Eisner award winning, mostly like independent graphic novels for companies like First Second. Mm -hmm. She's done a lot of books there uh, with, I believe, her sister, Jillian Tamaki. They've worked on books together. And she did do a great Supergirl uh, mini series back in the day. She doesn't do a ton of superhero books. So I was excited because I like her, her indie graphic novels. So I was really excited to see she was doing Zaytana. And art by Javier Rodriguez, who I love. Very classic style, kind of like that Michael Cho, Leo uh, Romero kind of look. Um, again, mostly doing covers, not really doing interior work anymore. And so you get these two, and it's just such a treat. Mm -hmm. I mean... Beautiful, visually beautiful, so vibrant. I loved how vibrant the coloring uh, was. Colors were great. The panels, uh, layouts were so fun. Mm -hmm. So, so what did you think? You know, uh, I I super enjoyed it. I, I of course I've always really liked Zatanna as a character. I, I'm not like you know 
her biggest fan and know everything about her, all of her lore. But I always thought that she was super neat, loved that she did like magic, spoke backwards, you know, that whole thing was so cool. So it was uh, already going to be super interesting to me to read this sort of like first issue Zatanna following her like on this like new path. Yeah. Um, Loved it. Loved that she's sort of this like washed up Vegas magician. Yeah. So this was funny too because I didn't know, total aside, Mm -hmm. but in the Steve Martin autobiography, I didn't know he got his start. Mm. His like first kid job, he wanted to be a magician. Wow. He learned, he worked at a magic shop at Disneyland when it first opened. Oh, wow. That's really interesting. Yeah. Nothing to do with any of this. (laughs) Well. Except magic. Except magic. Anyway, uh... Um, so it's basically almost like so yeah she's washed up she doesn't do magic she doesn't she does use her tricks. powers she does tricks mm-hmm. insert arrested development yeah quote right there <laughs> illusions michael the trick is something zatanna does from for money and in vegas uh <laughs> cut that as well <laughs> Um, but no, Zaytana. So yeah, so she's not using her powers. Uh, and she's very powerful. I mean, she's usually a, a, a full-time member of the Justice League Dark. Um, but yeah, she is just doing tricks, just trying to make people smile. She's not even at a pop. She's trying to get headhunted by like a real casino. Yeah. Like some sort of Caesar's Palace type deal. Yep. To put on like like a high level show, but she is actually just doing like free shows. Yeah, if you have the water park pass, you, <laughs> you can go see, see her show for free. Yeah. Um. So she, we don't know why though, and you do get a little flash of her childhood, which mm-hmm. is cool, mm-hmm. where she kind of first her her dad Zatara is an actual full mm-hmm. magician, and she's trying to learn tricks like the tricks that I tried to. I I give up on anything I'm not immediately good at. So I did have a magic kit as a kid. Mm -hmm. And I do remember, like, she has, like, the the red Solo cups and the ping pong balls and trying to hide them. Yep. Uh, Slide of hand stuff. Yeah, so, and she can't do it. Kids make fun of her. So she asked her dad, like, hey, man, can you actually show me magic? And he does. And he does. To to possible ill effects. Yeah. So we kind of see that she's got some magical trauma. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's why so she's out of the game. She's just doing tricks. But there's this weird lady. Weird lady. Who keeps seeing her shows. Keeps coming to all of her free shows. And she's a little bit weirded out by that. But she's like asking the stage manager, like, is this weird? And the stage manager is like, your it's show's Vegas. free. It's Vegas. Everyone's weird in Vegas, yeah, too. Yeah. And they're like, they're, your show's free. Of course they're going to come if they want to. Like, don't yeah. think anything of it. But... You know, this lady comes in and some weird stuff in like the same spot, always watching her shows. And Zatanna is like, okay, I've had enough of this. Immediately, this is where I gain a lot of respect for Zatanna because it's kind of my like style of showmanship and like, you know, I do this to customers. It's like immediately harass (laughs) your audience. Like go up to them and just start hammering them Mm -hmm. with intense questions in what is supposed to be a form of entertainment Right, 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 right. Just start like berating them. Put them them on the spot. Yeah, Zaytana, I was like, this is a page right out of the Sienna playbook. Mm -hmm. So so she's trying to get to the bottom of who this person is and then some some weird stuff starts happening, man. Mm -hmm. Weird stuff. Got to check it out. It's it, I loved it. It was a lot of fun. It was sort of like, it was giving me those like movie vibes where you're following this like down on their luck sort of, you know, hero and, you know, their world is about to get turned upside down. Um, Javier Rodriguez has such a distinct style that I don't want to compare him to anyone else, but I feel like for a recent comp, Again, very different styles, but like Greg Smallwood stuff in Human Target, it is definitely not one to one. They are very distinct, but I guess they're kind of referencing that similar kind of like sixties, sixties art style that they're they're bringing into their work. So again, just a a huge fan of this book, and I Zaytana is never a character that I've really paid, not like. I just haven't read a ton with her in it. Yeah. You know, yeah. she'll pop up sometimes, like, when I read <clears throat> Justice League Dark, Tinian's Run, I was like, oh, Zaytana's here. But, like, I don't really know much about her. So this isn't something I would have picked up had it not been for the creative team. Mm-hmm. And it was really, really good. So a uh, huge, huge win. Huge dub. Uh, so make sure you pick this up. Yeah. And say Zaytana backwards. Uh, Anataz. Nailed it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're going to give this... 
How many rabbits? Mmm. 10 out of 10 rabbits. I'm giving it 4.9 ping pong balls. The scale's out of three. Whoa. So it broke the scale. <laughs> this is a good one. I dug it. Yeah, definitely check it out. Um, Next one on the list from a little studio called Mad Cave. Not that one at all. It's not one we physically have. <laughs> so one, Not we, we want to remind say. people that this weekend, if you are local, we have mm -hmm. Tommy Lee Edwards, who is writing the new Gachamon one-shot, Gachamon Ken Deathmatch, that drops this week along with the new Gachamon number one. He will be signing at Ultimate Comics Durham this Saturday, 12 to 3, for free. You can also bring your other Tommy stuff. He's done so many incredible, so much incredible, like Star Wars covers, obviously. Co-creator of Mother Panic, done some Umbrella Academy stuff. Done a ton of exclusives, exclusives for us. Um, incredible artist. And really just someone awesome, awesome guy. So mm -hmm. if you're in town, go see him. We, now Tommy, if longtime listener of the podcast don't want to know how many emails i've watched get auto deleted that he sent in <laughs> we did not read his one shot because of a shipping issue we weren't able to get it wasn't a book that we got previewed yeah. from mad cave mm -hmm. so we were waiting for the physical shipment and we weren't able to get it in time before we filmed so but we did read gotchamon the mainline title that one's by cullen bunn written by cullen bunn maybe you met him we had him out at free comic book day yes. Uh, with art by Chris Batista. Mm -hmm. Now, do you know anything? Did you know anything about like Gachamon or ba it's it was known as Battle of the Planets in America. Gachamon is it's yes, you know, so foreign name. I was familiar in like the vaguest sense of Gachamon because I had seen you know it was very popular in Japan mm -hmm. um, many many moons ago. Might still be, I don't know. Uh, but I've always seen like the artwork of the characters. Oh, for sure. Um, super iconic looking. Super iconic. All of the bird costumes that they have. So um, I was familiar in that aspect, but I've never like watched the little anime that they had or anything like Me that. Me neither. I've never seen Battle of the Planets. Like I knew the kind of pitch that they were like scientist ninjas <laughs> that Science had ninjas? wings and they kind of have like a mighty, you know, my reference point is always going to be Power Rangers. It was that's very Power what Rangers. What I was as a kid into, you know, mm -hmm. they have the the Zord type deal, yep. and they're fighting these science monsters from the galact against their baddies, the Galactor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was all very. It's all very quintessential Japan, like Japanese. Common Rider, yeah, like, like, that kind of stuff. I, I mean, even just like going down their list of classic animes with like Gundam and like they they always have like these sort of uh, team force, you know, where they've got like a team of people that are themed off of something and they all fight, you know, mm -hmm. together. So this was definitely one of those quintessential like Japanese stamps of anime. So this is basically, it is a jumping on point if you like us aren't super familiar. Maybe you kind of get their deal, but don't really know it 100%. Mm -hmm. uh, it is uh, Origin. They are doing a whole line of books. Tommy had that one shot. Uh, this one came out and Steve Orlando is telling one from the point of view of Galactor, the, the kind of the bad guys. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the first time people have done something with this license in a, in, a, in a while, a few years. I think the last people to do something was maybe Dynamite. Um, and just super fun, especially if you're into the kind of like kaiju fighting, like if you're into Power Rangers, if you're into Godzilla, yep. if you're into those types of things, then this is very much in that vein. Uh, really good art. Colin Bunn's a great writer. Mm -hmm. Uh, very, I don't want to use the word competent because I feel like that sounds like a slight, but I just mean like very, like really good, just kind of getting you all the information you need if you have never been introduced to these characters. Mm -hmm. You kind of, and and not through like an origin. You see it through action, which is always something I'm looking for in a story. We don't need to see how the science team ninjas decided they wanted to wear feathers. Like, I, I don't care about that. Yeah. I want to see them punch a big alien. Yeah. And so they know that that's what you want to see. And they kind of set some interpersonal drama with like the B team who's training to replace them. Mm -hmm. And your intro to the villain very briefly. You, you get the deal. Yeah. They like, do a great job of showing you the world through action very quickly. And it doesn't feel like I'm reading an origin, right. which I thought was really cool. Yeah, definitely agree with that. Um, what laid out really well. And really great artwork. I enjoyed it. So my question, though, what? Let me do a, my Wes Anderson impression. 
What type of bird are you? See, I wouldn't be a bird. I would be one of the villains, which are themed off of cats. <laughs> so you'd be evil. Yeah, I'd be evil. I'd be evil. I'd be a falcon. Because nice. they're super cool. Yeah, falcons are cool. I really liked and the... And kind of my name similar. One of the characters is a condor, which I thought was really cool. I so. like owl. Owl's neat. We're just, let's just start naming birds. <laughs> What's your favorite bird? You don't like birds. You're a cat. Uh, no, I like birds. Um, I think my favorite is typically an owl. I like um, snowy owls most of those more than discs. anything. Uh, they're mm -hmm. very cool. I love owls. I was just thinking about my favorite thing to do at the Ren Fair is to see the bird show. Yeah. You get to see all those those birds. I also love ravens and crows. They're, ah. They're very smart. Now we're ghost machining it. Yeah. Uh, which we will be talking about a ghost machine later on in the episode. Mm -hmm. Not the ghost machine, a ghost machine. A Don't ghost get it machine. twisted. <laughs> um, but yeah, I really dug it. Um, I thought it was super fun. If you have, it's a lot of launches lately have been very driven by 80s nostalgia. Mm -hmm. And this is a little bit earlier. Uh, this is, you know, 70s really, yeah. I feel like, is when it, we saw it in America. And if you were in the know, maybe you saw it before it got brought over yeah um so i'm interested to see if it's going to bring any people into into the shop or or kind of what the response is going to be but i know it's super beloved like tommy for example is a huge gotcha men fan and that's why he's writing it because like he loves these characters oh that's great um so it's I've, always great when like the artists actually love the content that they're doing right they really take special care to do right by it yeah so so yeah i really dug that first issue not really knowing enough to kind of have a feeling how it was going to be one way or the other really dug that first issue so if you were a battle of the planets kid or i you know like me like a power rangers kid you want to give it a go um i thought it was a good first issue uh now now <laughs> now Brittany, got ahead of myself we can talk about a ghost machine a ghost machine distillery is going to sue our asses for this because <laughs> of the brand confusion we're causing no this is of course from distillery you can tell because it's large and in charge and shiny look at that look at that cardstock look at that the pages you can see the art hold on you might even you can kind of see the art maybe even normally i don't show the art but i got the thumbs up from zach because it's so big you can even see it from afar yeah um and that's normally how i read these i have someone kind of hold them up about 10 meters away wow you've got some great I eyesight sh i shout turn <laughs> anytime i'm ready do you have like the the opera goggles that you like bring no. up? No, no, you just have like great falcon, falcon, falcon eyes. I'm coming back to falcon. Okay. Sometimes though, if we're doing it in weird areas, when I shout turn, people think I'm yelling pull, and then people are, sh you know, I mean? skeet shooting. Oh god. It, it. We did this once near a skeet live skeet shooting. <laughs> Please keep saying that. <laughs> like, just I was offered to go skeet shooting and I couldn't make it or whatever and it's like the single like biggest regret of my life because mm -hmm. he was like hey you know would you ever want to go skeet shooting we can chomp on cigars and like you know you pull the, the plates and you shoot them I'm like yes and it didn't happen and so if anyone who watches wants to invite me I to will do go what? skeet shooting <laughs> isn't that what it's called I don't know, but it's just funny how much you've said it so far. Now I'm questioning everything. It's like when you say something too much. I mean, anyway. I know what you're talking about. I know like the pull, and then it yeah. pops up, and you yeah. yeah 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 yeah. Again, a very a Wes Anderson trope. I feel like mm -hmm. skeet shooting. Very royal pen and bombs. One more time. No. <laughs> Uh, all right, so Spectre Graph issue two. This is the second issue mm -hmm. uh, because we loved issue one so, so freaking much. So much. And I will note that we're very excited. About it. I was going to say something else, but I decided not to. Um, so where we left off, issue one. Mm -hmm. Realtor, her baby. Her baby. Unattended in the high chair. Oh, God. DPS on the way. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, in New Jersey, it was called Dyphus. Have you ever heard that? No. Yeah. No. I've made dyfus references and people don't know what I'm talking about. No, I've just only or known child protective services. Is it CPS? CPS. I'm Child saying. Protective yeah. Services. CPS makes a lot more sense. <laughs> uh, CPS. So her baby in the high chair. She just needs to show this house. She thinks it's going to be quick. She's like, man, this really spooky, ornate ghost 
like mansion that is built like a giant clock and these weird goth, goth people. people this will be in and out she's like listen fast. there's nothing weird about this this is going to be a quick sale in and out didn't didn't really go that way no Mm-mm. um quite the opposite hot goth redhead throws a little wrench into her plan Mm-hmm. because this is not just a normal house it is a machine that makes ghosts yes and so she wants to become a ghost we don't know why she wants to turn this machine on and she and the realtor accidentally get trapped in the house mm-hmm. when she tries to turn on the machine and we doesn't doesn't look like it works but you know spoiler alert we do see this world's version of a ghost yes at the very la- end of issue one. So issue two, we're picking up from there. Mm-hmm. So what did you think? So oh this my was gosh. close for, close for top number one for you. Close for number one. Yep. Because obviously I loved the first issue so good. and this did not disappoint in, as a second issue. Incredible. Um, you just, you jump right in to the action. Um, I personally loved the energy that this realtor was giving. She was so over it. Oh, my God. The red is like, oh, I'm so sorry that like I'm goth and I want to be a ghost. And she's just like, I love oh, Nightmare Before oh, oh, Christmas. Oh, 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 poor little goth girl yeah. got played. What? Yeah. We need to get she's out like, of I here. I need to get to my son. Yeah. I, she's like referencing like, man, when mom's like, can I lift a car? Yeah. Apparently that's <laughs> she is Maybe doesn't love her kid enough because that is not, Oof. she cannot Oof. lift a car yet. Uh, no, but, you know, her her attitude just, like, flips. She's yeah. thinking, like, as clear as she ever has. She's like, we've got to get out of here. And, you know, blubbering goth girl aside, shut up. Let's figure this out. We need to get out of here as fast as possible. And we do get a lot of backstory. On Vesper. It, on Vesper, the, the, the red-headed goth child yes. of this yes we we understand like what would make you want to go in there and make yourself a ghost because she thought this would work and it didn't seem to work mm-hmm. and but she volunteered to turn this machine on and get turned into a ghost so what would kind of make this person want to do that right uh so you you get that backstory you get the lore of vesper she's just one of those goth girls who is like i want to be what people are scared of right in the dark and you know quintessential edgelord action here yes and she's like turn me into a ghost i don't care i'm you know i'm excited i'm excited for it i'm excited life is dull boring i'm i'm ready i'm ready to do this and now we kind of this has turned into you know, issue one was a lot about building suspense, and there still is the suspense in issue two, but issue one was very much about creating this kind of unsettling atmosphere, doing some world building, really kind of trying to throw you off balance, set up the tension and the suspense, and yeah, building that tension of like, the, we know the kid's left at home, mm-hmm. and we know something's going to go wrong. Now issue two, aside from the backstory, has almost become like a haunted house issue because mm-hmm. they are trapped. They can't get out of the house. They're trying to find the key that will let them out, but it's gone missing since they a- tried to activate the machine. Mm-hmm. And there are all these strange ghosts, whatever. Ghost question mark? Haunting um, and after them. And all we know is that Vesper keeps saying this is not how it's supposed this to be. This is not what I signed up this for. This is not what I signed up for. This isn't what it's supposed to look like. And I would just say, like, we normally kind of try to stay away from making life recommendations aside from anything that might personally enrich us. Right. But right. I would say if a, a cult leader, aside from me or Brittany, <laughs> <laughs> suggest that you turn yourself into a ghost and that it's all going to be easy super simple Mm -hmm. smooth also we've never done it before you're Mm going to be the first one here's the key we're not going to be there go and do it it's kind of on you to to not be surprised that it goes wrong to not be surprised that it goes just because he said you're his favorite does not mean that it's not a trap in some way so you know i would say ultimate comics i think we can say ultimate comics I'm going to speak for the company and say we recommend not doing this. We totally Firm recommend stance, not doing I that. I think. Yeah. Unless, of course, if it comes from one of us, then I think you can throw that out the window. And lucky for you, the only thing we are suggesting is you subscribe. Subscribe. Um, but, yeah, I mean, super cool. We, we, we continue to kind of delve into the mechanics of what are these ghosts 
yeah. that in this world. How does it work? How it we works. still don't know. Um, there's still a lot of mystery here. Um, but and- you start to learn that it is kind of like a camera. And that yeah, it's that cool. sort of taking like these snapshots of people, Your soul. yeah, and and it's making like a, a time stamp within the house itself. So that's what I thought was so interesting. You sort of get more of the mechanics of the house in this issue. Um, and Christian Ward's art, you know, can't just spend all this time talking about the story. Obviously, a horror story written by Tinian. You know what you're kind of getting. You know what you're in for. Christian Ward man delivers. Uh, is doing. A lot, same amount, equal legwork in building out this world. Absolutely. And showing us what these ghosts look like. And so much of what we know about this world is visual. Mm-hmm. It's not actually being explained to us what these these things that we're kind of, they're seeing out of the corner of their eye or kind of chasing them. Um, the visual storytelling that Christian Ward employs in Spectre Graph is incredible, along from the art just looking freaking awesome. Mm-hmm. I've liked his stuff since he did Odyssey. Uh, a few years ago uh, for Image. So if you haven't picked this up for whatever reason, um, hopefully your shop still has some copies of number one. I know we went big, so I think we still have some left at Ultimate. And don't miss out, you know? If you're a fan of all things spooky, Hellraiser, the one you do, the 13th 13th Ghosts. ghosts. (laughs) Uh, It's got something for kind of all... Yeah, absolutely. All horror levels or offbeat storytelling. So issue two great read that mm-hmm. was my my favorite of the of the the week yeah so don't miss out if you if you dug number one there's this there's a long lead time because of everything because these are like double size and because it takes so much to print and stuff i feel like sometimes people pick up number one and almost like forget to pick up number two mm. so if that's you make sure to get number two and put it on your pull list absolutely now you might need to take lead on this because i am unfamiliar with this cat by cat, I mean duck. <laughs> Scrooge McDuck. I can't do that accent. You <laughs> nailed it. Uh, so, yeah, this is the first. Oof. Zach's like, stop. stop Zach, stop. I can just feel. <laughs> I hit the microphone multiple times throughout this show, no matter how it's placed. <laughs> so, sorry about that. Uh, but, yes, this is Uncle Scrooge and the Infinity. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Not boy. on purpose. And the Infinity Dime. Number one, <laughs> written by Jason Aaron, with art by Paolo Matura, Francesco Di Ippolito, De Giuseppe, Patrovicio, Mangiatori, Persinotto, and Consoni. A uh, lot of Italian. Mamma mia. <laughs> a, lot of Italian, a lot of Italian artists. Um, but this was the one shot that has... <laughs> that made me cry a little bit. Marvel. Well, when I pulled it from Diamond, it just added various others. I was like, well, they're on. It's on here. I'm going to yeah, yeah, tr- yeah. go for it. But, um, you know, Dynamite has been doing Disney comics like Stitch and The Villains mm-hmm. and Hercules, mm-hmm. which we read. Mm-hmm. Um And this Marvel proper hasn't been really doing Disney comics. They they always license them out to other publishers. Mm -hmm. And so this is the start of a new era. And they've already announced, you know, the follow-up that's on FOC, I think, next week. What if Donald Duck became Wolverine? Uh, That's the next one shot. I didn't put it on our final order cutoff list because I figured we'd talk about it now. And this is the start of Marvel doing at least duck books yeah now as someone familiar with uncle scrooge mm-hmm. and donald and huey newy huey and the news huey dewey and louie huey louie and the news <laughs> dewey <laughs> what, what's the band name uh i know what you're talking about huey and the it's from the scary movie news? that he likes it something J- jonathan <laughs> patrick bateman <laughs> uh, yes, producer yes. American Psycho. Huey Lewis. But it's, it's Huey. And Huey the, Lewis. Huey Lewis. <laughs> the news. I'm saying duck names. You are Huey All Dewey. Right. <laughs> it's hip to be a square. That's one of their songs. Mm-hmm. With the with the hatchet. <laughs> so 
<laughs> what did you think? Back on track. This was so much fun. It was so goofy and silly in the way that you think of Disney cartoons. I, I mean, I know that you were talking about how you were more of a Looney Tunes kid when you were growing up. Hence the bugs. I wore the bugs <clears throat> to rep. Warner Brothers, baby. Disney ain't got nothing on us. <laughs> Bugs, Daffy, Taz, others. I was you pretty a much bunch of ducks. Uh, anything and everything in between. I was a product of my time in the '90s. Even Woody the Woodpecker. Yes, I loved Woody Oof. the Woodpecker. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but so I, I, I love Looney Tunes. Mm-hmm. But I did also watch a lot of Disney stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and I watched. Donald Duck cartoons, obviously. Uncle Scrooge is Scrooge. I mean, it, it comes from the uh, Christmas Carol. He is that Scrooge character, but set in the Disney uh, First, universe. Yeah, and th- that's what it sort of opens up on in this book. Is it? It talks about his origin, where he is Scrooge, and that's his whole backstory. But and so, you know, his whole thing is money. He's selfish. He likes being rich. He has gold. Um, he, but what if he didn't have that redemption arc? The relationship with his nephew Donald. What, and right. What if Donald nephews? and his grandnephews hadn't shown him the love of family and Christmas and all of that magic? Imagine being taught how to love by Donald Duck. Do people well, like Donald? Not Donald Duck alone. Obviously, you got the three ghosts that visit you. Past, Which are the present, kids. and future. Even I don't think all... it was the kids. No. <laughs> I don't think it was. Oh, I was like, I'm getting it. He's <laughs> Jacob Marley and the three kids are the, the other ghosts. Three, the three nephews kind of jump in way later with like ducktails where oh. it's like them on going on adventures and stuff. Okay. But uh you know, we're 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 talking quintessential Christmas Carol with the three ghosts, past, present, future. Right. That's how he learns his lessons. But um, what happens if he didn't learn? What happens if he stays this greedy little duck who wants all of the power and the money? And when will enough be enough? And it will never, it will be, never enough be enough to fill the gaping hole that is inside of all of us. <laughs> and we just try and cram things in there, whether it be Diet Coke comic books records looney tunes paraphernalia Mm -hmm. vintage gremlins toys and without from what i've been told because i haven't learned this lesson yet without the power of love you can keep cramming stuff in that hole will never be filled i continue to try i mean you know when people say money doesn't buy you happiness i i don't think that um a poor person said that have you ever flown first class because i've accidentally been bumped up there once or twice and there's no going back i I finally understood the titanic right (laughs) i was like ugh. (laughs) have a child get those behind the grate (laughs) get those in the hole uh anyway anyway this introduces elements of the marvel (laughs) universe where you are dipping into the infinity stones but it's infinity dimes yeah so i will admit i was extremely skeptical of this book because one i was like looney tunes so much better right don't care for these ducks don't care for disney Uh jason aaron I was confused because his big, like, launches this year is, like, EC Comics, like, bringing back a new line of horror books Mm -hmm. and Turtles. So I was like, where's this, how does this Uncle Scrooge comic fit in anywhere? Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, God, how many times are we going to do the multiverse? I was like, even in the, I can't get out of it. In the duck books, like, it's been the plot of every, I mean, like, Spider-Verse did it so well. That now, I mean, DC's doing it. All the Marvel movies have to deal with the multiverse. I'm a little sick of it. So when I read this pitch, I was like, Jesus Christ. They can't even control themselves (laughs) in the Uncle Scrooge comic. They have to do the multiverse. But I was pleasantly surprised. Yes. I thought it was done in a really fun way and like showed me I think the it was, characters. It was done in a cheeky way. I think that yeah. they were being very self reflective on the fact that they have played on and on with the, the multiverse. They thing. were like laughing to themselves about thinking about how irate I would be. Specifically you. They, I don't know. Jason, me and him go way back. <laughs> um But yeah, no, it was fun. So so yeah, you have a duck who doesn't who doesn't learn the power of love and the power of family. Uh, and so he is 
stealing all the other Uncle Scrooge and every other universe is he's taken their gold mm -hmm. and their lucky dime. Yeah. And you follow your main line. I guess the main one. The main Uncle Scrooge. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think that that pretty much is the, the, the main, the quintessential Uncle Scrooge from all of the cartoons is who you're following, and he's diving in with multiverse and he's, Scrooges. He's, like, teaming up with the other Scrooges to get their mm -hmm. change back. And also... This, and get, also get their change back. But also the universe that this bad Uncle Scrooge is in has like turned bad so yeah. they got to save the day there because yeah. it's basically a, a bad dystopia mm -hmm. uh but yeah it was it was super fun uh like i said as coming from someone who doesn't have any nostalgia at all anti-nostalgia anti actively as a kid i was like ugh, ugh, scottish duck disney Bleh. lame <laughs> i want to see tom and jerry kill each other Oof, yeah 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 I didn't realize though. I've watched some old Mickey Mouse, and I didn't realize that they were all kind of like that back they in the day. They were. I didn't all like know. That. Violence reigned supreme <laughs> back then. Um, but you know, it's a big, oversized issue. So one, you get a huge, you know, main story written by uh, Jason with those great artists. Let me name them all again. <laughs> uh, but you also get the original Christmas story, Christmas on Bear Mountain which is the pivotal origin for Scrooge McDuck. This is like this is like what was supposed to happen and mm -hmm. didn't happen for the Scrooge that went wrong, which I really appreciated. So you get some classic Disney art and kind of Uncle Scrooge's origin story. And I really liked how they drew the bear on roller skates. That's I thought that was cute. very cute. Very cute. I liked his little tail. Um so yeah, I was I was I even enjoyed the old school, Silver Age, the like Dell stuff. So uh so yeah. It was a it was a win for us, I think. Yeah, yeah, an eye opener for you on uh, Disney. No, <laughs> this was the last week look back. By the way, we mm. didn't. Anyway, <laughs> so now we're at the end of the show. We are final order cutoff. Mm -hmm. So there were a couple books you read these, right? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. I mean, me too. <laughs> no, some of these I I didn't refresh myself, but I mean, oh my goodness, uh. This is it, the big EC relaunch. Like I was saying, Jason Aaron is helming one of the other books uh, on FOC this coming Monday is EC Etipaths, which I kept spelling wrong. I kept saying Epitaths. No, mm. it is Etipaths oh. from the Abyss number one. And horror anthology, some really killer creators on this book. Brian Azzarello, Stephanie Phillips, Chris Condon, Jay Holtum on writing. On art duties, ah, Jorge Forns. Love my boy, Jorge. One of my favorite modern Batman artists. He's doing some of the art. Phil Hester, Peter Krause. And it is just like your old school 1940s EC horror books. But, you know, this isn't, this is the modern. What mm -hmm. it would what it would be like if these books continue to come out and right. continue to ca and are catering to our modern sensibilities. Uh, so I'm really excited. I, I'm a big fan of the EC it's such an important brand. Ugh. <laughs> In the history of comic books, though, EC Comics, and, like, when we were at Heroes Con, me and our producer, Zach, were just like, eyes, there's so much, it was like Uncle Scrooge. We were surrounded by gold. Mm. And our eyes were huge because there was all this golden age and there's these classic EC Comics. Super cool. So I'm really excited that they're bringing the line back because no one's done anything with it for a few years now. And it seems like Oni, Oni Press, who's bringing it back, is kind of doing it right and making sure really big names are getting to do some cool horror uh, books. Not to be outdone. It seems like something's in the water. Brittany would know about that. <laughs> oh, man. Jesus Set Christ. myself up for that. <laughs> You did that just to make sure I was still, I was not like <laughs> zoning out. And you almost caught me. You almost caught, you caught sleeping. me. <laughs> uh, Hello Darkness, number one from Boom, which <clears throat> you guessed it, a horror anthology with yeah. top creators. Yep. Uh, so you get people like James Tinian, the fourth mm -hmm. uh, creator of Boom, Something is Killing the Children. Uh, Brian Azzarello. Apparently, he is in an open relationship with all publishers because he's on both. Uh, Garth Ennis. And you get some incredible artists like Verda Deladera, the original artist on Something is Killing the Children, Becky Cloonan, uh, Vanessa Del Rey, and some others. So this is, again, 
it's a, it's Boom's horror anthology. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So. It seemed really cool. Also, I think they mentioned that there's like some uh, never been told something is killing the children content. Yes, that's gonna be in it. So exciting! Give exciting. it give it a whirl. Yeah, and Man at the Hour. I think I was talking about this with a, another creator at Heroes. I was just like, when does James Tinney in the fourth sleep? Seriously. Because we, you just, you know, we're talking about Spectrograph. We're talking about all these books. Here's another one. This yep. is from DC Comics. Nice House by the Sea, number one. Uh, with great art by Alvaro Martinez Bueno. And it is a sequel to Nice House on the Lake. Mm. Which, if you haven't read it, kind of set at the apocalypse. Mm-hmm. And these people who have really never met each other are, you know, end up at this mysterious house by a lake. And they're watching the world end and they don't know why they have been selected to be spared Mm. by this kind of person they all knew in their life who, for whatever reason, has put them in this house together. And then, obviously, it's it's a very spooky setting. I mean, you know, you think you're an average person why you know all that guilt of survivor's guilt yeah 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 yeah. and also was this guy in fall what you know Mm -hmm. a lot going on yeah there's a lot so this is the sequel nice house by the sea number one okay similar concept we're seeing these people who have been spared from the apocalypse Mm -hmm. but they think they deserve it these are like Mm. industry titans like Mm -hmm. billionaire millionaires like whatever so they're like, Tch. no survival's guilt. Yeah, but they're of course like, of course I'd be picked to like lead humanity in this next right. evolution. I'm powerful, and you know, I deserve it. But obviously, if you make it that far up to the top of the totem pole, you're probably not a great person. Probably not. So, I'm interested if it's going to be kind of like a ten little. Uh, and, and then there were none kind of situation yeah, yeah, yeah. where they were, you know, picked to be killed off or, uh, you know, we don't know. Or they start picking each other off because they mm-hmm. think they should be the one that survives by themselves. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's, it's like I said, uh, same creative team as Nice by, nice House by the Lake, obviously in the same world. Yeah. Um, so if you dug it, um, definitely give it a go. But it also seems like you don't have to have read Nice House by the Lake to pick this one up. I'm really excited because this is just like Summerween is in full force with all of these like horror books and things that are coming out. It's it's very exciting. It's cool. I love it. I love to see it. So normally that's where we wrap up. Mm-hmm. But we have some unfortunate news to share with our friends. Mm. I'm gay. <laughs> I know that this has not come up yet. <laughs> the producer's walking off the set because he's tired of my BS. No, this is serious. Um, we are going to have to take a, a, a little bit longer of a hiatus on this podcast, which is sucks because we're, like, all gelling. Mm-hmm. Like, especially there was so much momentum till this two-week gap. I mean, we can all agree. We yep. were feeling really good yep. about everything. We were seeing, like, new viewers, and it was doing everything we were trying to do with this podcast of getting people excited about new comics. You know, obviously, we do the live show. We were mm-hmm. seeing a lot of people hop over from the podcast and check out the live show. All my evil plans. <laughs> the Mac. It was, I was just watching the wheel, the cogs. Coming there was not, to fruition. not, not a sand, a piece of grain of sand in the microchip. It was all working. <laughs> Um, but then it turns out, now you guys are going to be perhaps the first to know, we are opening another store and we are, you already know, we are moving our flagship store, Mm -hmm. Carrie, and it's going to get pretty big and we're nearing on your summer show Mm -hmm. because Brittany helps run all the NC Comic Con events. So Mm -hmm. the summer show is coming up and then. City, yep. I th- you know I think we'll be back before then, but um, fingers crossed. When I started looking, one, you know I was like the podcast not going to take a lot of time, but we are all 
overachievers and dedicated a shit ton. I was like, was it going to take an hour for us to film it? <laughs> oh, so easy. Then Zach just tosses it up on YouTube and we just give him the producer credit. No, like a lot of work goes into this, it especially does. on Zach's end, yeah. on our end, having to read the books and like really like take notes and things and prep for it. Me, you know, putting, figuring out what we're going to talk yeah. about. You know, you would think the publishers would give us PDFs. They don't. Uh, so it takes a lot of work. And so with this new ultimate opening in less than a month, <laughs> weeks. Oof. I know. It's scary. Supposedly in two weeks. Oh, my gosh. That's I'm so sweating. Soon. I am sweating. Yeah. Um, I realized and Alan suggested, rightfully so that we take something off all of our plates right now. Because Zach, if you didn't know, is not just the producer of this podcast. He's the guy who preps the entire live show every mm -hmm. week and runs our eBay and our website. Yep. So we all wear so many hats that we were like, man, <laughs> maybe we open this this sixth store <laughs> and, uh, and move the carry store, move our biggest store, and then we come back to the podcast. Yeah. And it's a bummer because we all love, I, I mean, I don't want to speak for you, oh, Brittany no, no, has spoken no. a it's, lot, but we all love this, it's right? It's been such a fun time. I've really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed reading the comics, but also just, like you said, gelling with like you and Zach. Like, it's been working. It's been really it's, fun. It's one thing to quit while you're down. Like, ugh, oh, well, it didn't work anyway, so great. We can just take it off our plate and whatever. But, like, you know, I've just seen how much work everyone on this team mm. has put into doing mm. this and how great the response has been. And yeah. so it is a real bummer. Uh, to is. be part of the reason why we have to put the kibosh on it temporarily. Yeah, but you know that's how it goes. Unfortunately, we are not full-time YouTubers. <laughs> we have other jobs. Yes, we have, to we do. have <laughs> other hats, many other hats we have to put on. So, you know, this is not the you know you do not need to put the flowers on our tombstone. <laughs> this is just a you know a short pause while mm -hmm. we get all these giant projects. Yeah, yeah. Done. Think of it as a break between seasons. You we can... are ending season one. Yes, and you know originally I threatened all of us with this was going to be a clip show because <laughs> I thought it would be very funny, and then I was going to make us play into like like tv tropes yeah yeah, yeah. it was gonna be terrible we decided <laughs> to just do a normal episode um and that had nothing to do with zach our producer putting his foot down he's like saying, no, i'm not show. doing that <laughs> it's like up for 11 we've this is only episode 11 uh so and you can still catch us all zach will still be basically the producer of the live show mm -hmm. Brittany will still be hosting i will still be you can see us both uh, you can see Brittany on Tuesday. You can see both of us on Thursday yes. for the uh, X-Men show, which if you haven't seen the preview post, it is mind-boggling. X-Men 94, giant size X-Men. Like, X-Men 1. Not X-Men 1. <laughs> Cut that. <laughs> <laughs> from the 90s. You didn't let me finish. X-Men 1 from <laughs> The 90s, multiple covers. Zach's mm -hmm. like, no, just mm -hmm. one of them. Um, <laughs> so we'll be, and I heard you're going to be in costume. I'm going to be dressed as Phoenix. I might be in costume. <gasps> I don't have one. Oh, man. I pull out my old, I did, I was goth rogue but back in the day. Wow. Try and find that. Maybe you should try and find that. Or I can bring Alex's Wolverine costume. You can try and find <laughs> <laughs> so like the muscles just like dip, like caved in it'll be, yeah it'll be uh the 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 shoulders will be like really too big for you I guess it's like all my suits <laughs> I gotta start juicing uh, but yeah so we are sorry feel free to send us love letters the email will stay active you can still continue to I encourage you guys to rewatch this because we really are close to monetization Ooh, uh yeah. you know keep rewatching these and you know we can get these tenths of a dime or whatever that's just a penny. Tenths of a penny, <laughs> whatever we would earn from all this. Uh, but yeah, you know, catch us on the live show. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for being with us on this journey, yeah. which is just, again, on pause. Hiatus. On pause. We will return. So mid-season break. Remember us fondly in this first season and get ready for the next one when it comes around. And I'm so glad you guys didn't mean to tell me to kill myself. <laughs> That was kind of what I took from this episode. Thank you all for watching. And, of course, we will see you at the live show. We'll see you there.